1959, and it was led by Fidel Castro. Uh, Fidel Castro was the son of a middle-class um, Cuban landowner, not a wealthy landowner, but kind of a middle-class Cuban landowner. Um, he had been in military school. Um, one of the um, key memories of his childhood was that um, a, uh, a tutor had come to his family and offered to uh, be the tutor to him and his brothers. And so he was supposed to go away to the city to be educated by this tutor. And instead, the tutor just locked him in the basement of his house and um, uh, starved him and his brothers. And that was an experience. He talks about that in his autobiography and how he wow. spent a year basically in captivity of this tutor who was supposedly being paid by his parents to take care of him. And so that was um, wow. a very traumatic experience. I guess so. Um, but uh, Fidel Castro um, was was very nationalistic, and he was attracted to Marxism as a college student, though he never joined any organizations. Um, he became a lawyer. Um, he was also in the Cuban military. Um, and then there was Che Guevara. And Che Guevara, um, contrary to what some people may believe, was not actually born in Cuba. He was born in Argentina. And uh, he was also from a middle-class family. He was not one of the extremely poor. He was from a middle-class family. And he became a doctor. Uh, and he became a doctor out of inspiration, out of the, the desire to help people, because he had suffered from extreme asthma as a child. And so his desire, you know, the, the people he, he'd always looked up to, and really he knew he would be dead if it weren't for doctors, and so he became a doctor. But remember, he still smoked those Cuban cigars. Right, that is true. He smoked Cuban cigars. And uh, Che Guevara, uh, Guevara, he joined a, um, he did join the communist movement, especially in the post-World War II era. And one of the most influential experiences in his life was going to Guatemala, um, in 19, uh, 1951, Guatemala had had a, uh, a president, uh, uh, Wacabo Arbenz, and Arbenz was a uh, kind of a populist, liberal nationalist. And Arbenz had, um, had taken two steps which were seen as unacceptable to the U.S. government. Um, his first step was that he had uh, legalized the Communist Party, um, which was not considered acceptable. And the second step he took was that he had um, he had uh, nationalized the plantations owned by the United Fruit Company. Yeah. yeah. Before we go on, uh, you want to yeah. so um, uh, you know uh, the government of Guatemala sought to nationalize the um, the the plantations owned by the United Fruit Company. Uh -huh. And their first offer was actually to, to pay the United Fruit Company um, the full value of what it was worth in compensation for buying it. Um, but it just so happened the United Fruit Company, in order to avoid paying taxes, had said it was worth a whole lot less. <laughs> so all of a sudden when the government was going to buy it for the price they declared it on their taxes, they said, well, actually, it's about ten times as much. And they said, well, we're going to buy it for the price you, you for the value you listed on your taxes. And so uh, as, uh, the United Fruit Company was not happy about that. And as a result, the CIA overthrew the government of Guatemala in 1951. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the government of Arbenz uh, was, was overthrown. The, the Arbenz himself was killed, and a military dictatorship was, was put in place. And um, Che Guevara had, had put his faith in um, the concept uh, that was being promoted by the Soviet Union at the time, the idea of the popular front, that being that, that the communists should align themselves with a liberal section of the capitalists, right, and they should work together to form kind of a progressive majority, and gradually advance, you know, to a, a better world. And because the communists had not set themselves up independently and they didn't have independent organizations, they had been tied into this government of our band. When the government fell, they were all killed for the most part. I mean, Che, che lived, Che and his, his wife, they, they fled the country, and it was, it was a very, um, a very, very dangerous situation. And um, Fidel Castro, now, he was in Cuba, and he was the leader of a, of a, of a nationalist group and they famously staged the, uh, the attack on the Mancata military barracks on July 26th. 
and um, it was a failed attack. They did not succeed, but the, the goal was to attack the barracks, get the weapons, spread the weapons throughout the country, and it was and it was not based on you know Marxism at the time. It was kind of a nationalist revolt. Um, Fidel Castro had read um, you know the writings of Lenin and Marx, but he wasn't devoted to that ideology at least publicly at, at that point. Um, and so the leaders of you know and people were killed. Uh, you know the leaders of the revolt, many were tortured. Um, and this is keep in mind that Cuba was the uh, it was kind of the um, the Las Vegas of the Caribbean. It was a um, it was the you know the mafia uh, you know ran the place. Um, uh, uh, the cities were kind of casino prostitution you name it. Yeah. And then the, the countryside was was sugarcane export, mainly exporting sugarcane to the United States, where the people lived in horrific conditions. Um, and you know I mean we're talking you know not not a uh, you know near starvation if not in total starvation. Not owning the land, working for a landowner, um, you know, or or for the United Fruit Company, which which had power there. So the, the conditions were were horrendous, and uh, so Fidel Castro, after leading this failed revolt, he was put on trial, and he gave a speech in which he said, "History will absolve me." That was the name of the speech, and he said people in the future would look back and say that he was right. Um, one of the quotes that stands out from that speech is he said, "What heart is not set aflame by the promise of freedom?" Kind of poetic. Hmm. And um, um, Fidel Castro went to prison. He spent two years in prison, and then he went to Mexico. And when he was in Mexico, he met a number of uh, other radicals, um, including Che Guevara. And together they put together a group. And so on, uh, in 1959, they, they landed in Cuba with less than 20 people, and uh, they engaged in guerrilla warfare. And after a, a two-year struggle in uh, 1959, they were victorious. And they brought down the uh, the government of Cuba, the U.S.-backed dictator Fulgencio Batista, and they established a uh, revolutionary government. And interestingly enough, at first, you know, there was an understanding that, that Fidel Castro had associated himself with communists like Che Guevara, but there was confusion as to whether this was a good thing or a bad thing. Batista had a very bad reputation in the U.S. Many Cuban Americans had fled, you know, to New York City and elsewhere, and there's a lot of, you know, I mean, Castro wasn't hated at the beginning, but but soon he was being hated in the U.S. press a whole lot because it became clear that he was not going to be another Batista. He was not just going to be just another dictator. He was going to start moving Cuba for an independent path. And uh, the first conference they had in Cuba after the revolution, Che Guevara uh, was already calling for the revolution to spread. He said, this can't stay in Cuba. This needs to spread all over Latin America, and if it just stays in Cuba, it'll die. Um, um, and they began, you know, I mean, some of their first um, projects were that they, uh, they, they, they declared um, uh, a regulation cutting everyone's rent to a certain amount, cutting everyone's rent almost in half, cutting the, uh, they nationalized the utilities, uh, electricity. And then, in 1961, it was announced that they were going to engage in agrarian reform, and that they were going to seize the property of uh, the United Fruit Company and foreign corporations that owned uh, that owned uh, plantations and land in Cuba. So, uh, when they did that, when they seized that, it became clear that, that Cuba was not going to be a friend of the United States, as it as it had been clear for a while. And uh, at that point, uh, Cuba announced publicly that it was going to be moving towards socialism. And um, Cuba, uh, Fidel Castro gave a speech justifying this. Calling uh, the speech was called uh, uh, "Cuba is a Socialist Nation," in which he laid out that you can't have freedom from imperialism and from capitalism if you are, or, and from foreign countries if you keep the capitalist system intact. That uh, the, the, the 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 liberal capitalists or the nationalist capitalists will always be capitalists and they'll always be able to be bought, and that true freedom from imperialism requires a movement towards socialism. Um, the, the, the three major parties in Cuba that had been in support of the revolution were the uh, July 26 movement, which was Fidel Castro's group, um, the Popular Socialist Party, or the commun it was the communist called itself the Popular Socialist Party, it was aligned with the Soviet Union, and also a, a student group called the, uh, the, uh, the Democratic Movement, which was kind of a socialist uh, student movement. And they, they merged together and formed the Communist Party of Cuba. Um, and they began to rapidly transform the country. Uh, land was redistributed, the slogan, land to the tiller. Um, if you worked the land, you owned it, right? 
industries were built up.